Can you give me fingers? Yes. Okay. Yes? So none on this? Okay. Yeah. He said he's going to try to still work to get it on. But, um, <clears throat> all right. So I'm just going to stare at the screen that's scrolling. Not get distracted. All right. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Natasha with Latino 210 Podcast. Thank you to VODPOD Media for producing, hosting, and to Latino Podcast Network. Make sure that you guys like, follow, and subscribe to Latino 210 Podcast on YouTube. And if you're listening, um, thank you so much for listening. So I have two special guests with me today. I'll go ahead and let them introduce yourself. Please go ahead. I'm April Rodriguez. Um, just April Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and? My name is uh, Andrew Gonzalez, and I'm the director of uh, the American Sons documentary. And this is uh, April Rodriguez, who is a part of our documentary team as well. Yes. So um, normally, guys, you know that I'm all about keeping shit real, and that's what I say. <laughs> so keeping it real with San Antonio, what it's like to be whatever you guys are in San Antonio, which we will get into. Um, but this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be more focused on something very, very, very important, something really special. So um, April, if you want to talk about it a little bit intro yeah um so if we want to you know bring back to 2010 um so my brother joined the marines a few years before that um right out of high school and it was one of his lifelong dreams to to join and be a part of this marine brotherhood that he had heard so much about um so he joined and did a couple of tours his tour to afghanistan unfortunately would be his last um so in he left in May, actually, on his birthday. He was on his way to Afghanistan, um, specifically Kajaki, Afghanistan, which was one of the more dangerous areas um, at that time. And so October 17th of 2010, he unfortunately stepped on an IED and was killed in action. Um, and when we he came, you know, did his whole um, funeral and, like, his platoon came back, he also came back with something that we didn't know could turn into what it is today, which is a documentary with film uh, footage, sorry, that he filmed himself. And um, digging through it, looking at everything, um, one of his kind of wishes or the things that he talked about doing was being able to share his experience with the world. So, and long story short, working looking for somebody here within San Antonio, um, Lara Varela and then bringing um, Andrew on um, after a few years we were finally able to get the project going so Andrew and Laura have really made um, what was just a thought in my head of here I've got all these thumb drives yeah <laughs> can you do something with them into an incredible film yeah. um, and we're finally COVID kind of threw a little wrench in there stopped us in our tracks for a little bit but we're finally to a point where we're starting to share some of that film with the public yeah, so how long have you guys been working on this? We started working on this, um, well, we officially came together to talk about working on this in 2018. Yeah. And so 2019, January, we were off, and we went to uh, California to begin filming. Mm -hmm. And so the filming process went from 2019 through 2021. 2021? Maybe even to 2022, actually. Okay. Yeah, all the way in 2022. Mm -hmm. And so now we're in the process of just putting the whole thing together. So it's been quite the journey. I can't imagine, and I'm sure you get this question a lot, but for people that aren't as familiar or just maybe want to hear your side of it, what was it like to see that all of this footage was there and to see, be able to see your brother? Um, holy shit. Like, yeah. Just the, from the first time to just seeing it again a couple days ago, every single time it's like a jolt of like, holy crap. Like I... For a split second forget his voice um or just like the goofy things he would do and even though he was in such a like serious situation like all of those things still came through so seeing it feels like it was just filmed yesterday yeah um him talking about his birthday we still celebrate his birthday we're making plans right now to celebrate his birthday in may and he's talking about his birthday so it it kind of makes it feel like it just was very recent yeah um yeah, it's it's surreal every single time. I wish it it was a little bit more normal, but it's really not. Twelve years later. Yeah. So, what does this project mean to you to be a part of? I feel very grateful to be able to be uh, to given the opportunity to be a part of 
the Villarreal family, mm-hmm. the Rodriguez family, and all of the families of the the Marine brothers that have let me into their life mm-hmm. and shared with me their most intimate details of what they're experiencing, what both they experienced in Afghanistan and what they're experiencing today. So I have a tremendous amount of gratitude just to be allowed to be in this position. But also, personally, for my career, it's really allowed me an opportunity to showcase what I'm able to do on this scale. Mm -hmm. And the biggest part of that, I would say, is allowing me to have the mental challenge necessary to overcome such a project. Because it is definitely, when I say journey, I I mean it. Uh, Five years of my life, you know, we're going half a decade now and we're not even done. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whenever you enter into a project like this, you got to be ready. And a lot of people told me that. They said, oh, it's going to take about six years. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, no way. (laughs) But do this in two or three. And boy, was I wrong. So now in it this long, you know, you really have to be committed. So for me, it's just allows me the to understand myself, Mm -hmm. what I'm capable of in terms of the commitment and to be able to continue on throughout all the challenges because it's not just been the time or difficulty fundraising. There's been a tremendous amount of challenges just going out on the road. So we did one shoot January 2019, Mm -hmm. and by the time we went to go do the second shoot, COVID was happening, Mm -hmm. you know, and so we're literally on the plane hearing all the reports about things starting to shut down. Yeah. And I remember April's there on the plane with us and we're flying, it's like five in the morning, six in the morning, and there's like a thunderstorm happening. Oh, and that's the, a, and that the, was the worst And the plane ever. is just shaking <laughs> and we're thinking, oh my God, are we gonna die, this you know? Sign. Yeah, <laughs> so just things like that. I got bit by a dog on another shoot and uh, you know, just being in, being in COVID and not knowing what's going on and you're in different parts of the country just trying to make sense of everything mm-hmm. and just the different environments that I was exposed to in different parts of the country that I'd, n- I'd never been to and then being out there by myself. Mm-hmm. So there was just a tremendous amount of, I would say, courage yeah. that I was forced to just take on. You know, and a lot of it is just understanding the why and to keep focused on the whole reason for doing this, you know, and to preserve that. And, you know, I, like I said, I just feel tremendously grateful mm-hmm. and I really appreciate the opportunity to continue this story on and mm-hmm. something i said the other night is jv is the first filmmaker on this film yeah you know he yeah. pressed record he he pressed record for the first time and he started the project with that in mind now i don't know how serious he was but according to what he says on the camera he has conviction in what he's talking about right and so mm-hmm. he captured these moments I don't know what he knew that was going to happen with this footage, but it's, you know, this is becoming a nationally broadcast project at this point. So Which is amazing. Yeah, it's just very interesting how everything just kind of comes together. Yeah, and congratulations on that. And, you know, and I know it's about, or, you know, initially started as JV Story, yeah. right? And about his journey being a Marine um, mm-hmm. and going overseas as hundreds thousands of you know men and women have gone um question for both of you though is and because it's obviously affected you Mm -hmm. to see what has it been like to see or to feel the ripple effect of even i mean just even just talking about jb how many people he's affected by filming by unfortunately passing um but serving his country you know and you knew that he was fulfilling a dream right but what does it mean to you, I guess, to see how many people it's affected? Um, so it was a scale that I didn't even imagine from the very beginning. Um, when it happened, it was very personal, right? They come to your door. It's just like the movies. They come to your door, knock on the door, and they're reading off this paper, and they're just like, I'm sorry to inform you. Um, and then at in that time period, I had an infant and a toddler, and my mom who just you know as you can imagine was torn apart and in that instant i had to pull pull it all in and i thought i was the only one going through that i thought i was the only one that had to figure it out while i was grieving and i wasn't like there was this entire platoon of people like not just friends and family which is completely different loss right you mourn 
the person that you grew up with and the person you loved, but the people that were in battle with him that either saw this happen, heard it happen, were come, came back to be told, and then had to go right back into it. Like, that was the same position I was in. Like, I was in my own battle at that point, having to hear it, take it all in, and then just go right into action, take care of my mom, take care of my kids, go receive his body, plan his funeral. Like, I was in charge of everything. And so I didn't realize that there was, you know, almost 120 or so guys that went through the exact same thing, but in the moment, like Mm -hmm. in the moment. And that to me hadn't registered. Like I didn't see how that, how you can actually do that, you know? Um, And so each one of these guys loved him profusely and had to endure that pain while still protecting our country. Mm -hmm. It was a, a weight that I had never thought about somebody else carrying. And now every time I see that on the news or I I hear of something, that's what I think about. I think of that ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Like how are these people continuing? You don't have any time to to process anything. And that continues to kind of be the, the story within this story, right? They never had that chance to truly process. And where are they today? What does that feel like today? Um, and having to, to deal with that without that support system right there with you. You know, like I said, I was dealing with all this stuff, but I still had my mom and I still had my husband and my kids to kind of focus on me a little bit. But what happens when you come out of the military or come back from war and you don't have that, you know, the barracks filled with a couple dozen guys for you to lean on, Yeah. you know, what does that feel like? So that ripple is like continuous. It's not like a one time like water effect. It's like a continuous drip that continues to like rip ripple over and over and over. And here we are 12 years later. And I think the feelings again are still there. Like that it's, it's so continuous. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Appreciate you. What about for you as a filmmaker? Yeah. So kind of the interesting part of making this project is going in and not having a, uh, a really strong idea about what we were trying to make, right? We had kind of a structure, right? We're, we're trying to see what's happening 10 years after combat mm-hmm. because we, we got this footage from April, but we can't just make, make a film based around the footage that, you know, of just one particular, one particular uh, Marine, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, what else is happening? What is this tied to? What what other stories are there? So we kind of went in freely, and April set up just contacts with these Marine brothers that JV had, and we're thinking, okay, let's let's start to talk to these men. Let's find out what else is going on. And then the story started to take shape over time. So it's like many renditions of what we were doing um, is allowed us to come to where we are now. And throughout that process is where I was able to dig deep and understand, well, what is going on in this world? Because, I mean, I'm not a veteran myself, but I'm always somebody who sees beyond just kind of the surface level story, you know, because everybody has their own unique perspective Mm -hmm. on any one experience, right? And even talking to these men, they have similar experiences, but they all have different experiences. So it's like coming in there, listening to everything, and then starting to line up, okay, what are the similarities? What's the bigger story here, mm-hmm. right? And then you start to just follow that through and see where everybody's pain lies. You know, what are the challenges that they're dealing with so many years after, you know, that stem from this particular moment? Mm-hmm. So it's just like navigating that water and just trying to understand, okay, what's important to these guys, but also what is important to an audience who's going to watch something like this? Right. Because without the audience, you really don't have a film. Right. You don't have a project. So it's, so it's what is, uh, is going to reverberate, not just to the community who's affected, but the larger audience, mm-hmm. at, you know, the general public who's going to watch this. Mm-hmm. And furthermore, what's the impact that we're going to create by putting a message out there? Mm-hmm. And then what's the action that we want that audience to take, right. right? And ultimately, it's just awareness 
of what goes on. So one thing that I like to say is like, it's easy to say, thank you for your service, mm -hmm. right? And generally, someone is going to say that when they see someone dressed in uniform or they see someone walking around with a prosthetic leg, prosthetic hand, burn, something like that. Yeah. And it's easy to say, oh, wow, he gave so much, right? Because it's, it's visible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the men in our film, they're very young, very healthy looking men, mm -hmm. but very challenged yeah. mentally and their pain comes from internally. Mm -hmm. So they'll have nerve damage, like unknown nerve damage where it can't be diagnosed. It's just pain and the, right. the doctor, so it's like, here's some pills to deal with the pain. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, what, when is this gonna go away? How do we heal this? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, we don't really know what that is, right? right? And they know it's sometimes you, you fall, your spine gets compressed. Well, what do you do? You can just get therapy for that. You can never really heal that, mm -hmm. you know, or a, a back issue, sciatica is a common thing, um, TBI. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, that I really learned is that the very difficult part of the mental issues that come from combat, it's not, and, and not just from combat, from any a traumatic situation mm -hmm. is when you have the the trauma the experience that affects you in your nervous system but also when you hit your head on something oh, the yeah. traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. so what that does is it, it exacerbates the issue multiplicative mm -hmm. right and then when you have that when you have an injury physical injury tied with an emotional injury it's it's something that's just imprinted inside of you yeah. and that's why it just it's so difficult to unwind these memories because it's just imprinted. So that's like this combination that's very challenging. And that's, that tends to be this, the things that lead to a very unfortunate circumstance mm -hmm. after combat is the combination of the two. Yeah. You know, and TBI, well, first of all, PTSD, almost anybody can get that. I mean, you can get yep. that from any situation. Mm -hmm. You have a, a, a bad situation growing up. You get a car wreck. I mean, you can just be frightened a little bit too much. I mean, it's just a traumatic situation. Mm -hmm. But then you have extreme trauma, right? Like you're seeing death, you're experiencing death, mm -hmm. you're getting shot at, your adrenaline level is just to a, just a level 11, tw level 20, you know? And then the TBI, that can also happen very easily. You don't have to be rocketed through the air and land on your head, which does happen mm -hmm. to a lot of these guys, right? Yeah. They're experiencing that and then they're having the PTSD too. But that can happen from just your head being bounced around. You're in a truck driving over rocks for an hour. Your head is just bouncing around the whole time. You know, one of our guys, he was pulling water off a truck and he fell and hit his head, mm -hmm. you know, and he, 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 his PTSD comes from one, his, one of his best friends was killed. Sure. But two, you know, getting shot at, you know, oh, just, yeah. just bullets are flying by and that's the trauma, the stress trauma. So he didn't really start developing till many years after combat, because mm -hmm. after he hit his head, and mm -hmm. that's what happens, the brain doesn't really heal right. Mm -hmm. And so you experience that trauma and it just continues to live on. So it's not just um, the moments like, oh, I got wounded in combat. It's like, okay, that's what happens. Now what happens next, mm -hmm. right? You go to combat, uh, you get wounded in a very traumatic way, and then the next thing you know, you're leaving. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, you're in a hospital bed. And all of a sudden, everything you were just experiencing when your adrenaline level was through the roof mm -hmm. has just come to a complete stop, mm -hmm. right? And that's an incredible challenge for these guys because why? They know that all, there's all their brothers are there in harm's way. So then they have to deal with the survivor's guilt, mm -hmm. right. right? And that creates trauma from then on. Mm -hmm. And if they lose somebody in that survivor's guilt, then that guilt's just going to overtake them, mm -hmm. you know, and then they have to live with that. So there's just all these different things that continue on from that experience. Like now we're 12 years later. Mm -hmm. Well, what else happened? How many interactions did you have? How many fights did you get in in those first five years with people? Mm -hmm. How many bad relationships did you come into? How many, you know, how, how many times did you distance from your friends and family? How many times did you just do something that was unbecoming of you? Right. And that's where the community is affected. Right. Right. Because then it just continues on and it continues on. And that web of interactions mm -hmm. will just continue to grow. Yeah. So those are the things that we kind of touch on a, a little bit. You know, our film is just ho kind of a holistically look at what happens with this one particular Marine and, and his life. Mm -hmm. But 
what I want the audience to see, like you were saying that uh, your husband, mm -hmm. you know, when he watched it, you know, I want them to have that connection that one, hey, I know what that's like, but two, hey, what about my friend? Maybe I should call. Maybe mm -hmm. I should call my friend mm -hmm. who may not be doing so well. Right. Maybe I should check in on him. Yeah. Or maybe someone check in on me. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I should check in on somebody because I'm not doing so well. Right. Right. And that's kind of one of the big messages that we're trying to get across. It's like there's all these guys who've come away and it, the importance of them staying together mm -hmm. is what's really going to help them heal in the end. Yeah. No, I love that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, now, has it been, do you think it's been more harmful or, or helpful this process of making this film for you and, and what you're going through in your family as well? For me, mm -hmm. um, oh, that's a rough question. <laughs> um, so I just naturally, I'm the kind of person that kind of just shoves everything down. Yeah. Um, but there have been moments where it all comes flooding out. Um, Andrew's caught a couple of those on camera. Mm -hmm. On camera. Um, so it just, I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't get easier. You would hope, you know, time heals all things, but it truly doesn't. No, it doesn't. Like, especially when you keep reopening the same wound, and it's not in a negative way, but it's still reopening each and every single time. And like I said, it might as well have been yesterday mm. because it feels that recent. Um, so I know that it affected everybody a little bit differently in my family and all the guys, again, like you said, everybody has got a different experience. Um, so for me, I think if I couldn't like shove it down, I don't think I could have done this. I think if it if I had let myself feel everything each and every single time, um, I think it would have been just way too hard because, and that's why my mom's not really involved in a lot of stuff. Um, she will always throw me in front of a camera, or have me do the interview or have me have the conversation because, um, I mean, as you can imagine losing one of your kids, like, no, like there's no way you can muster that kind of courage and like be in front of everything and um i talk about this in the film a little bit but the family i had before yeah my brother died is not a family that exists anymore like his his death created that ripple effect that we talk about mm -hmm. um and we had to figure out a new way to move on without moving on if that makes sense yeah um but I really want to touch on something Andrew said, which is survivor's guilt. Mm -hmm. um, you have it, right, as, as a family member, but each and every single one of these guys has some form of it. Whether they were in battle with him, whether they happened to not be deployed mm -hmm. at the same time, whether they had gotten out, they had gotten injured beforehand. Like, I've seen it in every single one, and that's all they talk about is, like, should have been me. I wish I was there. Why him and not me? Mm. You know, and that's hard to hear from somebody else and people apologizing to you. I think that's what what's really torn me apart the most is for these guys to come back and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't bring him back to you. Mm. I'm sorry that it was him and not me. I would trade places with him. And I'm like, no, like he wanted, he didn't want to be in that position. I don't think sure. he wanted to die, right? But he wanted to be on, in the forefront he did what you're telling me you would do he put his life first in front of other people's mm -hmm. and took on responsibilities to ensure that he was you know in harm's way before others were you know and that's something we learned through this film is that like he constantly did that and i said this the other day i always make an offhand joke and nobody ever laughs and i think <laughs> it's hilarious like like I grew up with him, right? He was my only sibling. Yeah. He was a pain in my ass. Like <laughs> we were completely mm -hmm. different. He, we were always fighting. We yeah. were always like on each other's nerves. Like he always called me names. Like literally have a scar where he punched me. Like, <laughs> like we were siblings. Yeah. So when I'm like, oh, he was such a pain in the ass. They're like, how can you talk about him? So ugly. Like he passed away. He's a hero. And I'm like, he is. All those things. Right. Pain was also like my core memories are him being a pain in my ass, like <laughs> him being a little kid in its boxers, playing video games, needing like a haircut a month ago. Yeah. Like those are like my core memories <laughs> yeah. of him. Um, and that's why, like, when, every time I say, it, I've said it a bunch of times, and everybody's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I laughed. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I like those are the things that keep me motivated when I talk about his story because that's the person I think about. 
Like I see this person on film, but the person I know in my head is this other kid, Yeah. right? Who would call, call my mom and be like, hey, uh, I'm not doing anything tonight because I'm broke. My mom would be like, fine, I'll send you some money. <laughs> and I'd be like, why are you sending him money? Like he should be responsible. He's in the military. He doesn't have any kids. Like what's he doing? You know? Yeah. And we find out in the film like what military guys do. Like they, you know, live life to the fullest each and every single day. Yeah. Um, and I love that the film, like you can see his personality just shine through. And mm -hmm. Andrew has done such a great job making sure that um, that continues to shine through because every time we talk, I'm like, okay, but this is about my brother, right? Yeah. Like this is about, <laughs> this is still about him, right? Because yeah. I didn't want it to be like a, I hate the military kind of film. Oh yeah. Um, or because he didn't hate the military, he loved the military. Right. Um, or like, woe is me, my brother died mm. kind of thing. It's not that either. It's like this shit happens. Yeah. We get to sit here and do this because that kind of stuff happens. Yeah. Um, and there's also hundreds of thousands of men and women walking around that have been through that that didn't die. Right. But also went through that and they're not the same person that they were when they, they went in oh, at yeah, 18, 20, 25, mm -hmm. whatever. Like just like I had to create a new family, they have to create a new persona. And that persona has been through so much shit that we can't even, I sorry, I keep saying shit. It's my, my word of this choice. This is an adult show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like they, they've been through so much. Like you don't, you can't comprehend it in this film. Like you see a little bit of it. You hear the sounds and stuff. And I, I was looking at some of the guys and I could just see like when you heard the firing, the bullets, the tanks and all that stuff, they're just like taken back to that moment yep mm. it's like you know i don't know if you guys remember disney kid or you from the raven show where you see like the little spinny eye oh uh -huh. yeah i feel like that's like what they went through they were like holy shit like i'm right back yeah. Yeah. in there yeah has it been hard for you emotionally to to make this film or are you able to separate yourself from what's happening and versus like your vision as a filmmaker this film has been extremely challenging for me mm -hmm. um you know, one of the things coming up, wanting to do this with, you know, not everybody wants to do documentary. Sure. But I enjoy re the realities, and I, I want more people to experience reality because, like, for instance, let me just get a little off topic, but if you're going to eat meat, I, you should see how the meat is made. Yes. Right? You should see how the sausage is made if you're going to eat it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of been my perspective on just creation in general. And I always kind of went towards that style of filmmaking. And I will say this being my first feature and the amount of time it has taken to make this project versus the projects I've done in the past, which are like, you know, five to eight minutes short documentaries. Mm -hmm. You're just in the world so much longer, mm -hmm. right? My other things that I've made, you can go shoot for two days and you're done. Wow. And you're in your the project can be put together. Mm -hmm. But I've shot 150 hours of footage wow. for this. Not not that doesn't include the footage that we got from April. That's physically going out and wow. shooting this mm -hmm. much footage. And physically so, like he wears the camera on his yeah, person. Like I'm like a lot of times especially through COVID, it was just me out in the field. So I'm I'm booking all the accommodations, the flights, traveling and then I have to shoot and then I have to direct and I have to plan and produce and everything all in, in one. And so this material is very heavy. Mm -hmm. And what these guys go through is extremely heavy. And so being the type of filmmaker that I am, which is immersive, I have immersed myself into that world. So when I would go, I would go alone and I would and I would stay with these guys whom I didn't know very well, by mm -hmm. the way. So there was always that thought of what could happen sure. in the middle of the night. Did I say something? Did I say the wrong thing mm -hmm. to somebody? And now they're not happy with me. Mm -hmm. Did I bring them to a, a, a place in their mind that is not a good place? So going out, that was always a concern. Of course, let's just say courage right which sometimes is good sometimes is bad mm -hmm. um courage would always supersede that i'd always go beyond and say 
I'm a filmmaker. This is what I do. This is the project that I'm chose to make all costs. Mm -hmm. We got to make this film. And so that's how I would, I would hard charge into the fire, like just to make the project. Yeah. So the subject matter, very, very heavy. A lot of these guys, one of our main characters, I mean, he didn't, he didn't want anything to do with the project. And I would hear that he would like not want to do anything project. He didn't want to speak, but then he was always asking about it. Mm. So when I met him, I don't know what it is about me. I tend to make friends easily. Mm -hmm. But when I met him, he just kind of unloaded a whole bunch of stuff on me. Yeah. And it's like he opened up like, and it was just like hanging out kind of thing. I, I wasn't filming with him. We just hang out. He opened up like a lot. And so from there, he allowed me to come film with him. And I filmed with him a lot. Mm -hmm. And so the deeper I got in with him, just the more I absorbed from what he was going through. Mm -hmm. And so there was this one period in 2020 in which I went out and filmed for like 14 days straight. And this is like heavy duty filming mm -hmm. where I'm traveling on my own. I'm carrying three bags and they all, they all weigh about a hundred pounds a piece. Oh, wow. And I'm moving with that. I'm booking my own stuff, booking the car, driving getting there, we're going from one place to another. We traveled, we went from Tampa to another place in Florida. No, let me, let me back up. I went to Miami, then I went to West Palm Beach, then I went to Tampa, then I went to this other place like south of Tampa, and then we went to Los Angeles, and then we went to San Antonio. Wow. And I filmed every single day mm -hmm. that we were doing that, and I was doing all those other things that you have to do. And I'm there being the liaison and the just, I, I don't want to say caretaker, but I'm taking care of everything sure. as we're doing because this isn't like my my uh, producing partner or my, you know, it's just someone that I'm filming. It's allowing me to part. So he's just living his life yeah, going going along with, with me. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't normally leave his house like ever. Mm. And he hadn't left his house in a long time. He hadn't seen any of these guys that he was about to now connect with in a very long time. Mm -hmm. And so that process for him was really emotional. Mm. And there were some things that happened with another guy who's in the film in which we saw him in a state that was really unsettling mm. for the both of us. One, because I had already built a two-year relationship with him and saw the negative progression of his life. Mm -hmm. But for this other character, he saw his friend in the flesh in a way that just deeply disturbed him. Yeah. So that whole period, and that was one else on the trip where I got bit by the dog and oh. the, co the COVID and all that uh -huh. stuff. So it was just like high tension the whole time. Yeah. So when I came back and we were here in San Antonio, I just had a complete mental breakdown. Wow. I was just exhaust, mental exhaustion, sure. uh, frustration. I was just over, like, I mean, it wasn't like over the project, sure. but... I, I was just like, this is just way too much. Because it is. I mean, you normally don't produce this way. No, no, most people would never do that. And and many people would think I'm crazy. And they did. They said they would never do something like that. Mm -hmm. But but this is a different kind of project. Right. The show must go on. Mm -hmm. you know. And, and th that was the time we had to capture all this stuff. And so af after that, I went, me and my girlfriend, we went on a, like a little sabbatical. And mm -hmm. I had to recharge. But yeah. Um, that was extremely, extremely challenging mentally for me. And wow. uh, I, I, uh, I was at my wits. But throughout the course of the project, I've been at my wits like pretty much every other day. Yeah. You know, as, as you have to continue powering forward because, you know, this project is like, it's not funded. It's like we have distribution, mm -hmm. but it's not like they provide you funding to go make the project and you can pay yourself a salary. Mm -hmm. You just... You have to continue to make the thing. There's a timeline that you're on. Sure. And so to get the project off the ground, you know, the credit card came out. Mm. And I'm swiping the credit card, mm -hmm. swiping the credit card, and then, you know, all my cash reserves, uh, th those are going out to pay for everything. Yeah. And so, you know, but that just goes to show you that when you take a leap of faith, when you go all in, good things will happen. Mm -hmm. So shortly after that, I would say, you know, within 10 months, we got – our first grant, which wasn't paid out for another 10 months after yeah. that. So it's like took 18 months from the start of the grant to getting it. Took a considerable amount of time, but 
you know, all, all these little things, they really weigh on you over time. Oh, yeah. And so that's what I'm saying when you have to be really focused on why you're doing something like mm -hmm. and, and committed. Yeah. And so um, it did. It has weighed on me. It still is weighing on me. And that's something I didn't realize for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that I would absorb so much energy from the people around me. Oh, yeah. You know, and I didn't even understand what that was. Mm -hmm. And so I have a friend who's a therapist and she said, how's your mental health doing through all this? And that's something I didn't even consider because I'm thinking, well, these guys are so much worse off than me. Mm -hmm. What do I have to complain about? You know, I didn't go through all this stuff. But then you start to realize, oh, my gosh, like, yeah, my mental health is in, in complete chaos right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm just like up and down and irritated and I'll just throw in go into uh, bouts of just like why am I doing this what yeah. what's the point of all this like why did I ever do this to begin with and that's like every other day sometimes yeah. you you're know? a little bit of that therapist too yeah exactly I'm like the therapist too because I, I'm just sitting there listening and like also helping me and you know what one thing that's really amazing happened I've developed very strong relationships with with some of these guys mm -hmm. and we were very close at, at this point and what I'm hoping and what I've already seen happen is like them getting into a little bit of a better mental shift. Oh, good. You know? and, and I'm really enjoying that part. But there's this this period of separation that I must have as a filmmaker. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, although I want to be your friend, I'm here to do one thing, and that's to make this project. Right. Right. And so that's the challenge, that the line I have to walk. And hopefully we can once we get over that, then it can be just freely open for us just to be you know, we do whatever we want and be friends and all that stuff. But, but I have like that, that separation that I have to, cr that I have to create for sure, you know? So that's the challenge, uh, mentally, but you know, after Tuesday and I was able to see at least part of the project on a big screen mm -hmm. and have a, an audience and see the feedback, you know, we got a new grant last week. So awesome. that momentum, it just like, gives you this little jolt right it's like, extra push you know and it's just yeah. like it seems like when things are like the worst you get a little jolt and you can come back up again so yeah. that's kind of where we are right now it's like let's let's get that momentum and let's just move forward and and that's why it's wonderful for you having us today it's like yeah. these these elements that are just starting to come together you know and and i just owe that all to you know us ha having the b ability to just put it out there yeah. you know and to, and to hear from the community and and I, I love where we are now we're in a great place I love that. Thank you. Um, so I had a question. I lost it. <laughs> I'm going to edit this out. Um, mm -hmm. That was very good. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> we got plenty yes. to say. Okay, I got we it. Got I, got it. Okay. Say, so. I got it. Okay. So um, for both of you, because again, this means something different for both of you. Mm -hmm. um, where would you like to see this film go? If it like peak where are you like paint that picture for me and what that means for you um hmm. so initially right telling my brother's story mm -hmm. right letting his legacy live on um because i mean i've only got two kids he didn't have any kids so this is the only way to tell his story um and to share his legacy be beyond the couple generations we've got left Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to get that piece out there um, and let the world see what we missed out on, you know, for the last however many years and however many years forward. Um, but also to bring awareness. Like, that wasn't my intention originally because PTSD and having these guys be vulnerable was very scary to me at first because I feel responsible mm. for however they feel after this is done. Mm-hmm. Um, and I definitely didn't want anybody to be worse off. I didn't want anybody to be mad at my family, my, be mad at me, mm -hmm. because we asked them for some very vulnerable things and some people couldn't do it. And some people thought they could additionally and then they couldn't anymore. Mm -hmm. But for the ones that have ultimately said yes, whatever it is that you need, um, I know it comes with a caveat of, but please don't make me look like a basket case or look sure. like a charity case because they're not they're human beings who have gone through something very traumatic and um i don't know about you but being on film is a little bit nerve-wracking like yeah you become a different <laughs> like a little bit of a different person um you have to set that aside and i think that's why it takes hours and hours and hours in a day before those walls finally come down 
and you get to see the raw person mm-hmm. but that raw person is is very hurt and very scared and very unsure of where this is going um and i don't want that person that that person that came out that little inner person um and any of these guys to be in a worse state than when we first started this sure um so that's what it means to me like i want them to do better and i want them to feel better after this i want them to feel like okay i got this off my chest my brother you know my brother and their brother my um is resting now he's happy with what we've done um and we've kind of fulfilled his last wish yeah right and i think that's the best we can do yeah from this and if if we can touch even one or two people through this and it was definitely worth it yeah, absolutely and you're gonna touch way more people than that but what about you yeah so selfishly sure you know i would like to get into all the film festivals and yeah you know do all the things that the, the filmmaker you know desires right when mm-hmm. you got into it in the first place mm-hmm. but with that being said just like i mentioned earlier without the audience there is nothing mm-hmm. right so my intention switching from the i switched from the selfish intention a long time ago right because the selfish intention was not enough to power through this project right it did not have the you know the tenacity that was required to overcome so ultimately as many people as possible to see this film Mm -hmm. in any way shape and form we can get that out right so one of the things is it's very near and dear to military personnel's heart Mm -hmm. to see this and to understand it so to tour in the you know military circles the military organizations to get their support and to have this film kind of tour around the country Mm -hmm. and have those big military audiences i think for them it's going to have the biggest impact Right, for them to be able to connect. And so like my goal with a character like J V is for people that are watching to see themselves or the guy they knew that mm-hmm. they served with that didn't come home mm-hmm. or the family to see their son in this young man and to take away all those elements that surround it, right? Everybody who's surrounding him and what they're going through to understand all those things, to see that there's much more going on, mm-hmm. you know. And early on, I talked to someone who did the data for Department of Defense, right? And you do this data and you look at, this is what the heart rates are like for these guys. This is what uh, their blood metabolism level is. And this is this and that. And just all these different elements that have to do with their health, mm-hmm. right? So it's just, it's just a spreadsheet that has numbers on it, mm-hmm. right? And he's like, oh my gosh. These are the faces of the of the of the data that I work with, you know. So for him, it was mind opening to see mm-hmm. the actual humans that were behind the numbers, yeah. and that's all we see as the general public. Mm-hmm. You might hear on the news or open up the newspaper, and it says like three dead in in Iraq, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and okay, war, people die. Yeah, that's all you think. Okay, next yeah. page, you know, six dead. Okay, nine. Okay, 12, you know what I mean? Is the numbers go up. Mm-hmm. But who was that person, mm-hmm. right? Who, mm-hmm. who was his wife at home, his mom, his, his kids, his friends that were with him? Mm-hmm. What was that experience like in his last moments? What about the week leading up to that? Yep. What about the, the two years prior to that? Mm-hmm. What happened after? There's just so much that you miss out on. Yeah. And so that's my hope for this project is that you know, military personnel, they can connect with this individual. They can say, oh, man, maybe I should check in on this friend of mine who I haven't heard from in a long time. Mm-hmm. And then the general public can see that war is a lot more than just what you hear in numbers. And also, when you decide to go into a new war, maybe you should make a, a, take a little bit more of a pause before deciding to send more troops in. Because yeah. I will say uh, this operation that JV was a part of, this was a secondary push from Obama to send more troops mm-hmm. into Afghanistan, right? So it's like when you make these decisions, right. why? Mm-hmm. You know, why are you making these decisions? What is the reason to send more people into harm's way, mm-hmm. right? And these are the young people that are put on the front line. That's an also a big theme in our film, right? So in our film, you will see this is the face of this is the face of San Antonio. You know, we yeah. have this West Sider on the front lines, yeah. right? This Latino kid 
on the front lines and that's something you don't always see mm -hmm. in the mainstream yep. right who goes to the front line lower income communities who gets pushed out there on the front line and you see that our film is made up of mostly latino men mm -hmm. you know in that experience all different kinds we got a brazilian guy uh nicaraguan guy mexican puerto rican, puerto rican you know then guys from thailand you know and so it's like these are the people that are that are out there serving mm -hmm. you know it's a mix of oh, individuals yeah. mm -hmm. that were that are out there on the front line and so who are they and so for us it was very important to tell a story that represents where we're from mm -hmm. absolutely you know to 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 alleviate what do they call military city usa yep. yeah right uh to li to lift that up and show the world hey military city usa this is this is the guy who was out there mm -hmm. this is the guy that didn't come home yep. and now just put that face on a different name you mm -hmm. know and when you see all those names on the wall there yeah that's the experience that happened yeah right mm -hmm. and so here's that individual that can be representative of that and then we hope that we can just share that story with as many people who are interested you know and, and by the look looks on tuesday I, I think it's going to go pretty well. You know, I'm excited to see the turnout, and I, I look forward to engaging with you know, individuals after, you know, these screenings that we have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are going to wrap up, so I do want to talk about how people can add to the funding, where they can go, how they can follow up with the progress of the film. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so filmmaking's expensive, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought it was like, you know, a little bit of editing YouTube on no. an iPhone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Simple, um, but no, it's extremely expensive. Yeah. And um, again, Andrew, like you said, he's eaten last. He put stuff on his credit cards, and I didn't connect those things at first. I'm like, how are you paying for all this stuff? He's like, it's me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, plastic card. Yeah. Um, so we've been lucky enough to get some grants, and Laura and Andrew have worked their butts off writing grants and working with people to help with that, and. Um, it so, seems like a lot of money, but it's not in the grand scheme of things. So now we need the community to pitch in sure. and help us get this off, um, not off the ground, but off into the broadcasting um, of this film. And so we still need quite a bit to go. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that you guys can donate at americansonsfilm.com slash donate um, or going on to the Instagram or the Facebook under the same name, American Sons Film and finding the information there if you can share it with as many people as you can that mm -hmm. you know you never know what connection leads you to the next connection yep. and like we said this is definitely homegrown andrew's from san antonio i'm from san antonio um laura's from san antonio and we I love that we we need our community to to pitch in and help rally yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So if anybody's interested, like you said, donate americansonsfilm.com forward slash donate. Um, and if you can't, we would just love you to share. Or if you're involved in any organizations who would be interested in a project with that, whether it's filmmaking or the Latin community or the military community, all these things, it, it, anything you're involved in, you think someone might be interested in this project, please reach out. We're on Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, Facebook the website americansonsfilm.com but also you can catch us at americansonsfilm at gmail.com send us an email reach out and let's just see how we can work together we'd love to work with you guys yep yeah. and one last thing so i don't think in this whole thing we've said my brother's actual name um not his entire name yeah no. we've we've he's go by goes by jv but if you want to look up part of his story because there's tons of articles online um and kind of get a feel for what some of the things you might hear um, his name was Corporal Jorge Villarreal Jr. Um, and again, he was killed in action in 2010, October 17th, 2010. I was going to say May, but that was his birthday. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll help you celebrate his birthday. Okay. For sure. Um, it involved lots of Corona and cake to the face. So um, prepare yourself. I'm not a fan of Corona, but I will take a cake to the face for him. <laughs> 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 and you've seen it. He's been there for those things too. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both so much. And I, I, as the film progresses, I would love to do a follow up. Honestly. Yeah, of course. Um, you guys, please. I'm like, look at me. Here we go. We can zoom in. Um, please, please, please donate, share, like, follow, support in any way that you can. This is not just about 
someone who lost their life from San Antonio, but San Antonio filmmakers, San Antonio, you know, influencers, San Antonio people, like if you're going to do something, you're going to support something, make sure that it stands for something. So again, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys appreciate and you. spending time again to VodPod Media for hosting, producing, and to Latina Podcast Network. Make sure that you like, share, follow, and if you are listening, please go to YouTube and look up Notenio Two Ten Podcast. Thank you. Bye.